Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do today, I will talk about the concern management um, in Health Cloud. So concern management, right? I mean, you might have, um, from your personal experience, even from my personal experience, right? You would have experienced this concern form, right? For Let me give you a very simple example. Um, you visit uh, a specialist, right? Let's say for a procedure, maybe let's say an MRI, MRI, MRI scan, right? And when you do an MRI scan, right, they will ask you to fill a certain concern form, right? That they will ask you to fill a few things around, um, you know, your name, your age, or um, if you're taking any supplements, um, and if you have any allergy to any medication, uh, that kind of stuff, right? And I ask you to fill it, and they will ask you to uh, say that, okay, we're going to send this information to XYZ people for data analysis or kind of things, right? So that's a kind of a concern management, right? And then if you agree to sign it, you know, that will proceed in a certain way. And also sometimes hospitals have a policy where they say, okay, which way you want, want us to contact you? Um, so they might say by email or by phone or by normal post. Uh, so if you say, I only prefer through a phone, uh, then they have to make sure that that email and other information is removed from the system uh, as a part of a data security. Uh, because, uh, for instance, right, um, if you are like, like in New Zealand, for instance, we do get people from different parts of the world, right? We get European Union citizens. And when we are dealing with someone from EU, right, there is a GDPR. Uh, data law comes into picture, right? So you are only allowed to use the data for what it's meant to be. And, and that applies to the data storage and other aspects as well, right? And then there are different privacy laws, uh, California Consumer Privacy Act, um, you know, PPA, Japan, HIPAA, United States, and PIPETA, Canada. So different um, privacy laws comes into picture. So the concern management plays a very important role. Uh, even if you're using the health cloud, right? So you just have to make sure that uh, there's certain concern that needs to be uh, agreed on. Um, and also, um, I just wanted to give you another example, right? Some people, some kind, like for instance, um, um, say for instance, if a person X, Y, Z, right? At least from a museum perspective, I don't know about other countries, but say for instance, if you've been diagnosed with certain uh, illness, right? And you go to a specialist, and the specialist said, okay, I'm, I want us to get involved in, you know, the specialist going to say, let's start a therapy, right? Therapy could involve a surgery or for medication or, or whatever, right? And if, uh, if, if the patient refused to be part of that therapy, uh, there are laws in New Zealand which allows a specialist to respect that law unless it's extremely life-threatening that the specialist know the, the person will die and then the concern of an immediate family member will come into picture. So it's getting a little bit complicated, but just to keep it simple, right? If, if a patient says, I'm not interested, I'm not gonna give you concern, then doctor, a medical hospital cannot do anything about it, right? So that has to be respected. Um, the same goes, so, um, so uh, like from a trailer perspective, right? They give an example, right? Patient. Uh, wishes to be contacted only by email. Just an example I gave you in a second uh, earlier. So you, the hospital have to make sure that they delete those part of the information uh, from the system, right? And then uh, certain things the, the user needs to be signed. So let's look at one example here. Uh, so I'm going to teach you from Trailhead. It's just pretty simple. I don't really want to reinvent the wheel writing um, uh, PowerPoints and kind of stuff, right? Um, so when we talk about concern management from a health cloud perspective, right, the few objects comes in the picture. One is a care program, <clears throat> excuse me, then the data use purpose. These are objects, right, in Salesforce. I'll show you in a second. Then authorization form data use, authorization form, um, authorization form text, and all are linked, you know, to each other through one way or another way <clears throat> through using a uh, data model. Um, so if you look at the data use purpose, right, it contains all the authorization forms for a single care program. Um, let's say Charles Green, right, our favorite guy in health cloud system, he decides to visit the care program 
and the care program uh, coordinators, you know, uh, had a look at child's uh, health history um, and decides to propose a certain uh, program for his back, uh, and then decides to enroll it. So before uh, the coordinator can do that, <clears throat> excuse me, the child screen has to sign a concern form, and that's where this concern form comes into picture, right? So that's where uh, you know the data use purpose will be handy. Then you have authorization form contains all the information related to a single authorization form. <clears throat> then authorization form data use uh, links and authorization form record to the data use uh, purpose record. So I'm going to show you an existing example in an org just to make it clear, right? Um, so this is a very simple uh, concern form process what we have. Um, in Health Cloud, and you, and you will appreciate the fact that they built it in such a way this makes it very simple. Okay, so let's jump into the org. Uh, I hope that's clear. You know, just wanted to give, think about this scenario, right? You go to GP, you go to specialists, they ask you to perform certain, you know, they, they, they recommend you certain things, right? And before that, they ask you to fill a concern form, and that concern form goes in and, and gets stored in the system. So that's the whole crux of the um uh, the concern management process we have, right? And 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 we have different objects getting involved, and and where every data is get captured. Uh, that's something I'm going to show right now. <clears throat> so let's look at the, the the first one, right? The data use purpose. Um, so if I go to go to the data, you oh, oh, come on. Uh, it just uh, why. This is my trial org. Um, so it's going to expire soon. Because <laughs> like I said, I can't explain uh, this stuff using um, customer org, right? So they're very picky, especially the health side of things, right? You have real data, so I can't really show any of this stuff. So uh, but the best way to do is just sign for a trial org and, you know, and do whatever you want it to do because it's your org for 30 days. Okay, sorry. Um, so data use uh, purpose, that's the one we're talking about. So what is data use purpose, right? It contains all uh, authorization forms uh, for a single care program, uh, single data, uh, sorry, yeah, single data use purpose record can contain multiple authorization forms. Okay, so it can contain more than one, right? All right, <clears throat> so we're going to look at this. So let's do all, right, so we, we have different... <clears throat> Uh, uh, stuff here. So let's look at the, the Makana patient support concern form. So if I go here, right, so you have uh, information like uh, the name, right, and the description, and that's pretty much it, and the purpose, right? So you have purpose associated. If we go to purpose, um, so we have uh, the, the diabetes and start date, end date, or, okay, all right, you know what? I'm just going to go back. I think it doesn't make sense. Let's look at some other example, right? Um, all right, data use. Let's look at chronic lower back, right? So <clears throat> let's assume that this is information, right, about, you know, say Charles Green or other customer uh, who's suffering with a chronic, uh, chronic uh, lower back pain. So this is a concern form. Um, so the, the form is about uh, to get a patient concern to participate in a pain management care program. And this is associated with the purpose. And if you look at the purpose, um, that's a separate record uh, object. Um, it's, it talks about what this record is about, right? So the chronic pain, that's the name, right? And the status, obviously new, start date. Uh, obviously, it hasn't ended yet, <clears throat> so which is great. And yeah, you can put the program sponsor and kind of stuff, right? Just to keep it simple, uh, we just assume that we have purpose object. The purpose is like, why are we putting this person into this care program, right? What's the reason behind it? So purpose is, is you got a bloody back pain, right? Chronic pain. So that's the reason why. Okay, so that's great. Now, I hope that's clear. Very simple, right? Let's look at the other one. Authorization form, if I look at authorization form, so yeah, I will pick one of them. 
Right, um, informed concern. Let's look at the informed concern, right? So what is an authorization form, right? Authorization form uh, contains all information related to single authorization form. So we're talking about here, it's an informed concern. Uh, it's not really the one I wanted to show, but it's all right. And default authorization form text. So it's linked to this, uh, which contains information about uh, why, what's the, what's the reason for, sorry, what's the purpose of this form? So this is general informed consent text. Then you have a content document. So obviously when you talk about the form, right, the person has to sign this stuff, right? And that signed document needs to be attached to somewhere. So that's where it comes in the picture. So you see that authorization form. Um, yeah, it's linked to this guy, right? And if you go to the details, link to the concerned please sign and here you have a signed document right which you can pretty much you know whatever the sign will be here so that's from a overall you know simple process right i mean i i try to simplify in a very simple way so you can understand uh, you link it to your authorization form and you attach uh the stuff to your co content document and that's it right it's your form it's your uh, um um, yeah, and this is not active for now, so, um, then we have, uh, data use, let's look at this one, you know, I have used authorization form, right, uh, so usually sometimes the customers, you know, the concern form, you can see that, um, obviously on, <laughs> on a trial or, um, sandbox, not in the real data. So if I look at the Makana informed concern, um, so so if you look at the authorization form, right? So you have data use purpose. Uh, so you remember that the data use purpose I spoke about, right? In the beginning, uh, the use of the data use purpose where the, the guy has enrolled for a chronic back, right? And so that's, unfortunately you don't have a data for that, but that's fine. Then there is, um, so, Let's step back, right? I think it's confusing. You must be thinking, I don't know what the heck this guy is talking about anyways. Let's look at the, uh, the Makana patient concern form, right? Let's start all over. So Makana concern patient form, it display various concern form for Makana. Okay, that's the usage. And because it's, it's to, about the diabetes, right? That's the purpose. Simple, okay? Now, authorization form. Uh, Authorization concern form, right? Is this the one or, or this one? No, not this one. Oh, form data use. Sometimes they make it confusing. <clears throat> okay, so we have this object which links to that the, the data use one. <clears throat> so if you go here, um, and so this is how it's it's concerned. Uh, it's linked to the, uh, this form, right? And and then it's also linked to the authorization form. Okay, so think about this. You have the main uh, authorization form data use, right? And that is a lookup to, uh, that's a relationship between the data purpose and as well as to the authorization form. So this will contain information about, the, hey, what's the purpose of this form, right? Obviously this person suffers from diabetes. And then authorization form where you have the concern text where the person has signed the form, right? So I hope that's clear. So data purpose linked to the authorization data use and and also the authorization form linked to it. And authorization form in turn is associated with uh, the concern uh, text from Akana, right? And which is, uh, which contains your informed uh signed form right that's how it is so you need to understand the object model if you're confused just go through it again right so data use linked to the main authorization data use and that authorization data use you know it, it, it's it's a relationship authorization data use uh, shares with data use as well as authorization form and then authorization form has a relationship between 
um, with what this guy default authorization form text and which in turn have a relationship with this content document so it's all tied together all right so that's yeah so um, you might think this theorem will look a bit messy but it does the job right um, and so yeah some of the things <clears throat> you you know even though it's coming from Salesforce some of them are not really not really great but it's okay I mean health cloud like I said right we don't use all of the functionalities of health cloud right some of them we really don't need it especially the place where I work right the, the world project I'm involved in and um, and also some of the stuffs are customized right heavily customized um, and and the thing is that we built a lot of stuff with the flows too but so you know the thing with the flows right um, talking about the flows it's an interesting thing right I have extensively used uh, flows to the point that you know I realized that it can't be used anymore so what I was trying to get into that well, we try to architect the flows in, in different ways right for the you know I so especially with the data volume I use um, so a couple of the projects I'm involved lately for the involving health cloud I've used platform event I build their platform event framework uh, just to you know solve certain problem and that framework um, uh, is uh, used to propagate certain things and and then we try to use the flows which flows unfortunately kind of you know cracked under a large data volume so I move that stuff to apex so I wanted to so and now I understand that Dreamforce is coming, right? That's one of the paper I wanted to talk if they accept it because I, the thing is that I never spoken at Dreamforce, not because um, the thing is that I, I don't really like to go for big conferences. It's in San Francisco. Um, it's okay if the column is fine because my wife is not very happy that I'm going to conference this year because we are in a holiday in Europe for, I'm, I'm taking three months of a, off break from work. Uh, just to do other things, right? Just to, you know, travel around Europe, you know, try different food, you know, show kids around different stuff, right? And, you know, spend some time with family there. And in between, then there's a dream force happening. So <laughs> I would travel from Europe to San Fran if I get accepted for the talk. Then, yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? I mean, I, because I've, I understand that it's a great opportunity to network, but you know, when it comes to family, I prefer that first rather than networking with strange people, even though they're associated with the, the same ecosystem, if you know what I mean. So, and you know, I, I'll be happy that I'll be representing New Zealand and Dreamforce if I get selected, like I said. And I actually, I, I, I put out three papers, right? Two other frameworks I built and one is around net zero cloud I wanted to talk about it something cool stuff we'll be doing um so yeah that's you know <laughs> that's something i did uh, we'll see how it goes right and you might get to see me <laughs> in um dream force um so if it happens if it happens right it's, it's a good opportunity you know two days and friend and it's an opportunity for me to go and meet my mate. I haven't been to the United States for, for a long time. Uh, ever since, <clears throat> you know, when I graduated from MIT, so I left the United States, then I traveled, you know, to Israel and lived there for some time. So I haven't had a chance to go back. So that would be a great opportunity for me to go to. So, yeah, so I understand that it can be a boring topic, right, health cloud. I, I personally felt <laughs> health cloud is not really fun, right? I don't know what do you guys think about it. It's it is not a cutting edge, guys, right? It's except the fact. It's it's okay. I mean, in twenty twenty three, where we have all the technology in place, mm, it's all right. Does the job, I would say. You know, so yeah. Uh, that being said, that's all I wanted to talk in today's episode. Hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Adios.